So that's why we're here today, to recognize, to really focus in on what's stopping us or hindering us or preventing us. And that's why I said yes to this gracious invitation. I had to say yes. There was an obligation on my life because I constantly, if you can just have a sneak peek into my life, I constantly, daily, I'm struggling, grappling, uh, uh, wrestling with the questions, will history repeat itself? Is it possible that my children will have my experience? And you say, Leonard, it's 2016, but I would ask you to connect the dots. Because sometimes it's the wheels on the bus that go round and round, round and round. Please understand, movement does not mean advancement. And we can be going around and not going anywhere. So, so, so yes, it's 2016, and I'm grateful I'm not back in 1994. But will my children have to fight to have African Heritage Month in their school? I know we celebrate it at Hamlet Place Consolidated, but do we celebrate it at Madeline Simons? Is there anything going on at C.P. Allen? Will they ever, is it possible that my children will go from primary to grade 12 and never see an educator that looks like that? Is it? Is it? Is it possible? Is it possible that we will present examples of cultural misappropriation? I'm black, in case you haven't recognized, because some might have sight, no vision. <laughs> But I'm a black African Nova Scotian. No school has ever asked me to come in to teach on the sun dance and the rain dance. That's not my culture. No one has ever asked me to come in to play bagpipes. That's not my culture. No one has ever asked me to come in and cook up a, a mean Mexican cuisine, an Ecuadorian culture, German tradition, Jewish experience, francophone language. I'm not asked that. But my son came home to say that four Caucasian people were teaching them African drumming. <coughs> that blows my mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why would there need to be a person of European descent representing a culture that is not their own? I, I, I have to ask that again because I put it in bold. I said, why would there need to be a need of a person of European descent to represent a culture that is not their own. We are in Nova Scotia. This is a society that is rich in authentic and culturally appropriate drummers. If you want a black drummer, call me. I got 10 that I can give you today. <laughs> But for my son sitting there, what did you just teach him? I'm sorry. You have the drums, but you have to work. <laughs> I'm just saying you don't understand the damage you're doing to a generation. So when a mother comes in and a father comes in with frustration on their lips, it's a place of hurt and pain that is still real. It's still real. I wrestle with the questions, will my children, how are they going to be treated? How are they going to be identified in the building? How am I going to respond when they say, I don't see myself in the school system? How are they going to respond when that, well, how am I going to respond when they tell me another cousin has been placed on IPP and all their friends are on IPP and that we are actually leading in the IPP? How am I supposed to respond? So today I'm here on assignment. You gave me my template. You gave me my marching orders. He wrote the speech for me. He said, lay the fire of urgency because now is the time we need to move, Leonard. It's not about taking a stand. It's about moving a movement for the achievement of African Nova Scotia learners. This is a call to action. Oh, I may not be invited back. 